Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome to Kids' Corner. I'm so glad you joined us today. Our story today is about secret sins. Can you hide your sins from other people, from God? We're going to find out if there's even such a thing as a secret sin. But first, Eddie has something he wants to tell you about what happened to him. Well, I didn't have such a good week this week. I went to the grocery store, and I was really hungry, and there was some candy. And I thought, Eddie, you don't have any money. You don't get any candy. But you know, there was so much. And I saw a couple pieces, and I thought, hey, they're never going to miss these. So I took them. Then I went outside, and you know, nobody caught me. I ate them. And I, I felt so bad, but I think I got away with it. I think I'm off the hook now. I think that was a clean break. Oh, my. Oh, it was really stressful there for a while, but I'm so glad I got away with it. Oh, well, yeah, it was, it was very bad there for a while. Uh, Eddie, I'm glad you came today because we're going to find out if you really get away with sin or not. Well, I was wondering that, but it looks like I got away with it. I thought so anyway. Seems like I have. Nothing's happened. My mom didn't find out, didn't get arrested, and I got the candy. Well, I'm glad I came today. I'm going to find out. I'm going to see, is there such a thing as a secret sin? Well, hey, guys, I love you. All right, I got to go. Bye. Now, if I were to ask your mother, or maybe your sisters and brothers, or perhaps your friends at school, what are your sins? What do you think they would say? Would they say, oh, he's kind of selfish. Uh, you know, he's a little bit of a bully. Always complaining, never his turn. You know, if he gets a chance, he always takes his share right out of the middle. Is that what they would say about you? Now, you know, if I ask you what your sins were, most of us would say, I can't think of any. But others see our sins better than we do. And the Bible tells us that we have all sinned, every single one of us. But you know, we're not going to talk about the sins today that others see in you. We're not going to talk about the sins that are obvious. We are going to talk about secret sins. Now, you know, um, some of the secret sins are jealousy. Maybe when someone has something and you wish you had it. You know, outwardly, oh, hi, how are you doing? Oh, that's wonderful. But inwardly, you're very jealous. Maybe you've started cheating. And you know what? Nobody really knows about it. Maybe you've started looking at pictures that are not right, and you know they're not. And you think, oh, it's not going to hurt me. No one even knows that I'm watching them. But you know, the Bible says, and actually scientists have proved that there's something goes on in your brain, and it's very, very dangerous to you. One of the secret sins that a lot of kids think that they get away with is lying to their parents. They say, I was here, but they were really over there. Now, other ones is maybe you've started smoking. Maybe you started taking drugs, and your parents don't know about it, and you think nobody else does either. Now, I want to tell you something about a sin that's secret. Now, first of all, most people think they can get away with sin. But you know, it's very, very deceptive. We all think, oh, I'm not going to get trapped. I'm going to play it cool. It's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to get caught. But it is so deceptive. You know, I have a picture here that I want to show you. Now, if you were to look at this picture, um, do you think that the hat is taller than it is wide? Is that what you would say? Well, you know, if we measure it, and here I've got this little measuring right here, and I measure it. Let's see, let me get it right down there even. Yes, oops, there we go. All right, you can see that's just the same length as my little piece. And then if I put it this way, you can see that it's the same length. You see, what we think is not what it is. 
And Satan would like you to think just like this, that, oh, you can get away with things and you can get by. Oh, others might get caught, but no, you're smarter than that. But I want to ask you something about your sins. Is there someone who sees everything you do? <laughs> yeah, there is. And who is that? Yes, we know who that is. That is God. God sees every single thing you do. Now, is God greater than your parents? It, does he have more power? So, uh, if he sees everything, even though your parents never find out, he still has greater power to punish you than your parents would. So, and I want to say, if God sees everything you do, then you know what? Is there any such thing as a secret sin? I don't think so. You know what? There's no such thing in heaven. God sees everything that is happening. Now, when you're going to do something, you know what you should always think? Would I do that if the Lord Jesus was right here with me? Because if you wouldn't do that, if the Lord Jesus is right here with you, then you're not believing the truth. Because the truth is, he is here with you. He is everywhere. He knows every single thing you do. Do you know God says that sin is, is like that if you plant something, you will reap it. You know, if you plant a little seed, then you're going to have something grow and you're going to get it back. Do you know that I have an ear of corn here? And I don't know if you can see this ear of corn, but you know, it's, it's a little bit like, see, there's an ear, but these are little teeny seeds. Each one of these kernels is a seed. And if you planted that, you would get a stalk of corn. And it's, the Bible says it's just like that. Say, for instance, that I just tell a little lie. Do you know what? It's just like one of these little kernels, you know, not very big at all. And you know, it's like planting that. Of course, if I plant the corn, what am I going to get? I'm going to get corn. But this is like planting a little lie. So I tell a little lie. And you know what? I come back the next day. Is there anything? A and maybe a week, maybe two weeks go by, and I don't see a thing. But you know what? Maybe in order to cover up that lie, I have to tell another little lie. So it's like planting another little seed. And then you know what? I've told a lie, and now I want to do something, and I think, oh, my parents wouldn't let me. But you know what? I've gotten away with lies before, so now I tell another little lie, and I plant that. Do you know what's going to happen to those seeds that I have planted? It's going to take a while. But each one of those seeds, are they going to have an entire ear of corn? Can you see how many seeds are on this ear? There's a lot. But when those seeds grow up, they'll have a stalk. And on a stalk, there could be three to four ears. And you say, yes, but this is corn. I, I'm doing something else. God is the one that said it's the same. God is the one that brings the harvest. Yes, you know, we plant this in the soil. We water it, the sunlight. That's what causes that to grow. But God says, if you sow evil deeds, you will reap evil things. If you sow good deeds, you will reap good things. And so he says it's very, very important what you do. Now, you may think, oh, I can tell little lies, but you know what? I know when someone is lying to me. You can think that, but that's not true. We have stories in the Bible where people have been deceitful. They've moved to another country. They had no idea someone was lying to them, but they were because God is the one that brings the harvest. So we need to be very, very careful what we plant. We want to plant good things because we're going to reap a big harvest. Do you know that sin always causes trouble for you? A little sin causes a lot of trouble. And our verse today says that you have sinned against the Lord. Do you know that everyone has sinned against the Lord? It says you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sins will find you out. There is no such thing as a secret sin. And your sin will find you out either on this earth or someday, standing before God in heaven, you will be judged for every single sin. That is what the Bible says. Now there's going to be something that we have in our story today that we're going to find out that there's a way that you won't have to be judged for your sin. But without that way, you will be.
And so don't think that you can go out and do whatever you want to and get away with it. You won't because God is the harvester. He's the one that gives the increase. So we're going to say this verse. And the motions go that you have sinned, thumbs down, you have sinned against the Lord. So it's against the Lord. And be sure your sin will find you out. So just all of the, oh, found me out. So, all right, can you sing that and do the motions? You did a great job. Could you do that again, please? You have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. You have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Numbers 32, 23. That was fabulous. Oh, one more time. Now, you remember that our last story was about Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. Well, it had high cities. They have found that it had double high cities. And how was Joshua's army going to knock down those walls? Well, remember that Joshua, he went out, and there he saw a soldier, and he said, Are you on our side or are you on their side? And he says, oh, I'm on neither side. I have my own army here. And it was the Lord Jesus. And he came as commander of the Lord's hosts. And so there were really two armies on one side and one army on the other side. Now, you know, uh, you know how they fought the battle. They uh, walked around the walls. Uh -huh. Was it six days? Once around the wall, and on the seventh day, seven times. And then Joshua says, now when I say shout, shout. And then the priests, and so when they had walked around the seventh time, Joshua, he shouted. And then he says, and the priests are supposed to blow their trumpet. And when the priests blew their trumpet, the walls fell down. Who pushed those walls down? Which one of the armies did that? That was God's army, wasn't it? There was no way Joshua was going to win that battle if the Lord did not fight. And the Lord said, this first battle, I'm going to fight. I'm going to win it for you. And therefore, all the spoils of the city. Now, the spoils are the things that are in the city. He says, those belong to me. Now, you know, when the people went into that city, they'd been wandering around in the desert for 40 years. There were beautiful things in there that they had never seen before. And those gorgeous things, they would see them and, oh, do you think that they wanted them? Well, I think they probably did. But what had God said? God had said, no, I fought this battle. They are mine. And the Lord said to them, he says, I want you to take everything except the gold and the silver and the bronze and the iron. You take that into the tabernacle. That belongs to me. Now, iron was very hard to come by in those days. So you keep that. But everything else, all the clothes, all the beautiful pottery, every single thing else you find, you're to destroy. You're to burn with fire. That's all going to go to me. Now, you know what, kids? This was just the first city in the entire land. God was going to let them keep everything else from all of the other cities. But that, he said, belongs to me. So when those men went in and they hadn't seen beautiful things like that for 40 years, wow, oh, they're gorgeous. They looked at them, but they remembered, no, 
No, it looks like it doesn't belong to anybody, but it does. It belongs to God. God says, this is mine. And so the Bible tells us that out of all the men that marched around that city and went into that city that day, there was only one man. And that one man, he looked like the others. He desired like everyone else. But he went a step further. In his heart, he coveted. He says, I want that, and I want that regardless of whether I should have it or not. Now, God, it says, no, it belongs to me. He might have looked at it and thought, oh, this would look so beautiful. It was a Babylonian garment. This would look so beautiful on me. And they feel that the Babylonian garments could have had gold and silver threads and fancy embroidery that would take a lot of time. And he probably thought, oh, I'm so tired of my clothes. Oh, I would love to have this. But what had God said? God had said, no, don't take it. It belongs to me. It is to be burned. And he may have thought, oh, that's just a waste. It's never a waste to ever not do what God has said. And so the Bible tells us that he found some silver and some gold and this garment. And maybe he put them in a basket with a garment on the bottom and the silver. And maybe he carried them just like he was going to take them to the tabernacle. But then he quickly went aside to his tent. And you know, the Bible tells us that when he went aside to his tent, that he took all of that, those things that he had. Now, I want to say this. What was he going to do with that beautiful garment? Was he going to wear it to dinner that night? Don't you think that people would know where he had gotten it? And what about the gold and silver? Where was he going to spend it? You know, it's kind of like if you go out and steal something, and then your mom says, where'd you get that new iPad? Or what about that watch? And you have to have an explanation. Now you have to either lie or come up with something. Or you just leave it and you can't use it. And that was the same with him. So you know what he did with all those wonderful things that he thought he just couldn't live without and that he just stole from the Lord? The Bible tells us that, of course, they lived in tents. And so, you know, if you put it in a tent, it would be so easy to find it. And so he went and he dug a hole in the tent. So he takes these beautiful things. He can't wear the garment. He can't spend the gold or silver. And he has to just bury it in a hole. It really didn't do any good for him at all to have it, did it? And there, too, was his family. Now, you know, if you live in a tent, it's not like somebody can be upstairs and somebody else downstairs, someone in the next room. They're all there. They see. We don't know because we're not told. But they evidently did know he was hiding it. Maybe they were the lookout. Oh, quick, quick, quick. Maybe somebody helped him dig the hole. Maybe someone suggested where they were supposed to put it. I don't know. But we're pretty sure that his family knew about it. And you know, this man's name, he was Achan. And you know, he was a pain to all of Israel. We're going to find out that sin always causes trouble for you. He thought he had hit it. No one had seen him. He, just like Eddie, thought I got away with that. But Achan, and you know how you can remember Achan? Oh, my Achan back. He was a pain in Israel and a very serious one. And we're going to find out what happened. Now, when the children of Israel had crossed over the Jordan River, they made their camp right here at Gilgal. And the first city they took, of course, was Jericho. Well, the next city to take was Ai. So they had conquered Jericho. And now they were to go on to the city of Ai. Now, um, Ai, how do you pronounce Ai? Ai. How do you spell it? Ai. So if you're pronouncing it or you're spelling it, it's all the same. Ai. So it's very easy to remember. Ai. I've both spelled it and I've pronounced it. Well, the Bible tells us that Joshua did the same thing that he did when he was going to take over Jericho. The Bible tells us that what he did was he sent out some spies. And he said to them, go check out the city. Go check out that city and see 
what is there. And so he secretly sent out these two spies, and they were going to go to what city? Ai. How do you spell that? Ai, yes. And he says, go up and spy out the country. So the men went up, and they spied out Ai. And then they returned to Joshua, and they says, oh, don't let all the people go up. No, no, just let about two or 3,000 men go and attack Ai. Do you know what? There's no use, everybody, to get all dressed up and go out there. You know, because the people are few. There's not very many of them. And so Joshua, remember, he said two to 3,000. He said, well, I'll play it safe. I'm going to send out 3,000. And so the Bible tells us that there were 3,000 men that went to the city of Ai to capture that city. And so as these men went to the city, it says the men of Ai, oh, let me show you the picture. They went up there. They thought they were going to win. And here is this army that's chasing. Oh, this is the Israelite army right here. Oh, these guys chased these guys. And it says that not only did they chase them, but they struck down 36 men. Now, you know what? These 36 men had done nothing wrong. Why, they, they hadn't done anything wrong. They had just gone out to battle. Do you know what, kids? I want to tell you something about sin. Sin always causes trouble for you, and it causes trouble for others. Some people say, oh, well, you know, I'm not hurting anybody. I'm just hurting myself. If I want to do that, it's okay. No, sin hurts a lot of people. And these 36 men, can you imagine these 36 families who lost their fathers? They were going into the country, and now it was just the mothers and the children, and their husbands were dead? Oh, that would be so hard. And the Bible says that the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Well, we, we, we thought we were going to win. And Joshua, though, Joshua was chosen the leader because Joshua always did the right thing. And you know what Joshua did? Did you guess that he prayed? That's what he did. He talked to God about this. You know, the Bible tells us that what Joshua did, he went to the Lord. And the Bible says that they were so downhearted and so sorry that they tore their clothes, and then they fell on their face before the Lord, he and all the elders, and they put dust on their head. You know, because when you put dust on your head, oh, that, that's, that's dirty. But what they wanted to do was to look as terrible on the outside as they felt on the inside. And he said, Lord, Lord, why did you bring the people over the Jordan just to deliver us into the hands of this city to destroy us? You know, oh, we would have been content to just dwell over there and live on the other side. You know, when Israel runs away from its enemies and can't stand before them, that's very serious. What should I say? What are the Canaanites going to think? They're going to think our God is not as powerful after all. And, and, and our name is going to be cut off from the earth. Nobody's going to ever remember that we ever lived as Israelites. And then he says, and Lord, what about your great name? They all know that the reason we're here is because you did all the miracles. If we lose, you're going to be dishonored. Oh, Lord, I don't want that. And the Lord answered Joshua. And he said, Joshua, get up. He says, why are you there? Israel has sinned. And they also have transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. I said to them, don't take any of the beginning things in the city of Jericho. He says they've taken some, they've stolen, and then they've deceived. You know, because when you steal something, you usually have to deceive. You have to lie about it. You have to pretend that you didn't do it. You have to act like, oh, no, I don't have anything. And he says they've put it among their own stuff. Therefore, that's why you couldn't stand before your enemies. I'm still going to fight for you, but not if you don't follow my commands. I'm not going to be with you. 
unless you destroy that cursed one from among you, then I'm not going to help you anymore. And he says, tomorrow, get all the people together. And then I'm going to show you who did this. Now, kids, God says, tomorrow? Do you know why they feel that God said tomorrow? He was giving Achan a chance to confess and the family a chance to confess and to say, I did wrong. Now, you know, some people think if you confess your sin, you just name them, oh, yes, I did this, and I did that, and I did that, and I did that, and well, now I'm forgiven. I can go out and do it again. No, that's not confession. Confession is agreeing with God. That was wrong. Oh, that's not what I want to do. I shouldn't have done that. And then you go out and you trust the Lord to help you not to do that again. Your whole goal is to, to become perfect, to do the right things. And Achan had a chance to confess. Now, maybe Achan thought, you know what? I'm not the only one. There's probably a lot of others. Do you know sometimes kids will say to their parents, oh, everybody's doing it. Well, you know what the truth is? Everybody isn't doing it. That's not what's happening. And for Achan, we're going to find out just how many people out of all the people stole. Out of, there were 600,000 men that left Egypt. I don't know how many there were in Joshua's army, but out of all those people, we're going to find out how many broke God's law. And so they, the next day, the Bible says, after the people had sanctified themselves, set themselves apart, cleaned up, said, okay, we're going to spend time with the Lord. He said to the people, all right, now we're going to take you by tribes. So they had the 12 tribes. And they think they probably drew straws or there was some way the Lord helped them know which one to pick. Do you think Achan was feeling pretty sick to his stomach at this time? Do you think he was thinking, oh, I wonder if they're going to catch me? I know I'd be thinking that. And so the Bible tells us that the first tribe, the tribe of Judah, was taken. Who do you think was of the tribe of Judah? Mm -hmm. It was Achan. So then the Lord says, all right, then I want you to take and have them by households, oh, actually by clans. And so he took the family then of the Zarhites. Do you think Achan was a member of the Zarhites? Yes, he was. And then they had them go by families. And the families of Zapdi was taken. Mm-hmm. And then he says, all right, go man by man by man. Now, you know what? Can you imagine if you were part of Achan's family, would you be feeling like, oh, oh, this is terrible. This is so awful. Do you think that he was at all glad that he took that stuff? Do you think that that Babylonian garment or the gold or the silver meant anything at all to him now? I'm sure he thought, oh, I wish I'd never touched it. You know, kids, he was just about to reap the harvest. But God tells us that you will reap a harvest too if you have secret sins in your life. Oh, maybe nobody knows about them right now, but the day is going to come because God is the Lord of the harvest. He's the one that's going to expose everything. And God had given Achan a chance to confess, and he didn't. God gives you a chance to confess. You can confess your sins to him as long as you're still alive. But once you're dead, you don't have that chance anymore. And the Bible tells us that, yes, when they went man by man by man in that family, guess who was taken? Achan was taken. And he knew that he had done it. Can you imagine his shame at this point and how horrible he felt? And Joshua said to Achan, he says, now beg you, don't cover it up anymore. Give glory to the Lord. Confess. Confess him and tell me what you've done. 
You know, sometimes even when people are caught, they still deny, oh, no, I didn't do it, I didn't do it. And he says, no, you confess it. Don't hide it from me anymore. You've been hiding it. Don't you hide that anymore. And so Achan, he did confess. He says, I've sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I have done. He says, I saw among the stuff that was in the city of Jericho a beautiful Babylonian garment. Oh, it was so gorgeous. And I saw 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold weighing 50 shekels. And then he says, I saw them. And of course, everybody else saw them too. But then he says, I went one step further. I coveted. You know, because when you covet, that happens in your heart. And the things in your heart will come out. It's First of all, before actions take place that are not right, there are things that happen in your heart. He coveted, and then he took them. Now, kids, I want to tell you something. When you see something, and you want something, and it's not yours, then just say no to yourself. Use self-discipline. Use self-control. You have got to learn to say no to your desires and your wants. They, you may have them. But then you have to learn to say no, or your life is going to be destroyed, just like Achan. And so the Bible tells us, though, he had never learned to say no to himself. And so he took them, and he says, they're hidden in the earth in the middle of my tent, and the silver is underneath. Well, the Bible tells us that they sent two men, messengers, ran to the tent, and there it was, hidden in the tent, with the silver under it, just like Achan had said. And they took them out, and they brought them out to everyone. And so there was everyone. Now, you know what? Do you think that Achan was glad to have any of those things that he had stolen? Do you think at this point that any of them looked good to him? Now, not only was Achan taken, but also who saw him hide that in his tent? Who could have confessed? and says, we know where it all is? Aha, uh -huh. it was his family. You know, kids, his family, they were taken also because they were really part of the sin. And so what did God say he was going to do with whoever the, the children of Israel says? He said to the children of Israel, this is what you need to do to whoever's taken it. He says, you must get rid of them out of the camp. They've caused the death of others. They've stolen from God. You may think, I've never stolen from God. Oh, you can steal from God. You know the most important thing that you can steal from God? That is your life. God's given you this wonderful body. He's given you a mind. He's given you a purpose. And some kids just think, oh, you know what? I just want to live my life and have fun and, you know, just do, do what feels good. And they have no thoughts about giving this life back to God to accomplish the things on this earth that he wants you to accomplish. And I want to tell you something. You give your life to having fun, you're not going to have fun. It's not going to be fulfilling and satisfying inside. You are only fulfilled and satisfied when you find out what God has for you and you do it. So don't steal your life away from God. It belongs to him. He made and created you and then he bought you back because he shed his blood on the cross for you. And you know what? There's other things you can steal from God. And of course, Achan had stolen this. And so the Bible tells us that the people of Israel, they had no choice. I'm sure those that were related to them thought, oh, this is so sad. But you know what? We must obey God. And they took them out and they killed them and they hid then all of what they had taken. No one was to profit by it. And so after that, then the Bible says they went back to Ai, and they had a great military strategy. They, they, they put some people in hiding, and then he said to the soldiers, you go back to the city, and you just act like you were attacking it before, and then run like you did before. And then these that are in hiding right here, they will run to the city as the soldiers run away, and they burn the city, and all of a sudden the soldiers look back, and oh, they were surrounded. They had an army here and an army here, and their city was on fire, and they took that city. 
And do you know that everybody got to go into the city and take the spoils? God says, these are yours. And every other town after that, the spoils belong to the people. Now, you may think, oh, it was very serious that God said that Achan and his family needed to die, that the punishment was death. But do you know that God hasn't changed? God says the punishment for sin is still death. I want to tell you something. That's why God says don't sin. Don't do wrong. It only hurts you. It will cause you a great deal of trouble. And that's why he warns us over and over. He tells us, you sow it, you're going to reap it. I don't want you to do that. Quit sinning. If you have secret sins in your life, quit them. Stop them. Don't think I'm going to get away with it. You know, you're just deceiving yourself if you think that you are, because God is the one who knows everything. And so for Achan, the punishment was death, but God hasn't changed his punishment. It's still the same today for sin. So just as Achan's punishment was death for his sin, God says that the punishment for our sin is death too. And you know, the Bible says that there's going to be flames of fire and death is separated from God. But God didn't make you to die. God made you to live forever in his kingdom. And you know, though, God says, I'll tell you what, you've sinned, you deserve to die, but I'm going to send my own precious son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's willing, he's willing to come down and he will die in your place. Do you think that day that Achan would have been glad if someone died in his place for his sin? God says, I've sent someone. Sin, the Bible says, you have sinned, all of us, against the Lord. And our sin is going to be judged. It will either be judged on the Lord Jesus Christ, and he'll take your judgment, or you will have to take it. But because of God's great love for you, he says, Jesus has taken it. Just accept the gift of forgiveness that he's given to you. And he says, I'm offering it, but you must accept it and believe. Some people say, oh, I don't believe that stuff. Let me tell you, it's a fact of history that Jesus did the miracles he did. Only God could have done what he did. It's a fact of history that he lived, that he died, and a fact of history that he rose again from the dead. There is enough proof. And if you don't believe it, it's because you're not willing to even look at the facts. Do you know there's so many people today, they don't even care about the facts. You can't convince them. They say, oh, no, no, that's not what I want to believe. You can believe the truth. And God says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the only one that has taken your sin. If you don't put your faith and trust in him, you are going to have to take the punishment for your sin. Just like Achan, God didn't want that. You know what? Have you ever put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus? Have you ever said, oh, Lord, I've sinned. We've all sinned. Our sin is going to find us out. God knows everything. But I want your son to be my savior. I want my sins to be forgiven and your Holy Spirit to live in me. If you've never prayed and says, oh, yes, Lord, I believe you died for me. I know that you're the savior of the world. Cleanse my sin. Make me clean inside. I don't want to be judged for my sin. And then you just say, thank you. Now, if you have a secret sin, if there's something you're doing and nobody knows about, they will someday. And you just need to think, what if my friends found out about this? My family, how terrible, embarrassing, and awful that would be. They will someday. But right now, God knows it all. You wouldn't want to be doing it if he knows it all. So just ask the Lord and tell him, I'm not going to have any secret sins. I'm going to get rid of jealousy in my heart. I'm not going to lie and steal like Eddie, even if though nobody else knows about it. I'm not going to be doing anything in private and secret, looking at things that you shouldn't look at, doing things that you shouldn't do. I'm going to cut that out of my life because I want to be holy as God is holy. Oh, I hope you choose that today. God loves you. He has a wonderful plan for your life. He wants you to love and serve and follow him. I'm so thankful you came today. I pray that you have a wonderful week. I love you, and God loves you too. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.